Hey there, all you good people. I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. You've seen all those videos where folks make music with floppy drives, haven't you? Well, my question is, can you do that and use an Apple II as a controller? Watch out, Arduino. Grandpa's back in town. Warm up the CRT. It's time for another episode. So let's talk about how a floppy drive can actually make music. These old floppy drives uh, basically have a head that moves back and forth on a rail. And this is controlled by a stepper motor. Now a stepper motor, uh, for those who don't know, is a motor that when you apply electric current to it will move a uh, one little step in a specific direction uh, of a prescribed length. This is what allows the floppy drive to have different spots or um, different tracks on it so you can record uh, record uh, data information on different uh, spots on the floppy drive. Uh, so music is made uh, very basically by making sound. We make sound by uh, vibrating something at a specific frequency. We can do this with the floppy drive by stepping the stepper motor at the same frequency as a note we want to play. Say we want to play A440. All we have to do is send stepper commands to the floppy drive 440 times a second, and there you go, it should be playing A440. So the floppy drive is a pretty basic uh, piece of hardware. Uh, in order to step the head in any direction, we only have to send it two signals. Um, there are two pins on the floppy drive, uh, one that is, indicates to the stepper motor to move one step in any specific direction, and the second is a direction pin that, depending on the signal that's on that pin, the floppy drive knows to either move in the forward direction or the backward direction. Uh, so in order to make music with this, all we have to do is write a piece of software that uh, knows how to step the motor at the right frequencies and also keeps track of where the head is on that floppy drive. So it knows, hey, if I hit the end of the track, I know to flip it and send it back the other direction. And uh, yeah, then we just hook it up to the Apple II. Now, hooking it up to the Apple II is where the real trick is. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the know, uh, the Apple II has some general purpose output pins on the game I.O. port um, that uh, basically just put out TTL 5-volt uh, uh, logic, uh, logic level of voltage. So all we have to do is hook those up to the correct pins on the floppy drive and strobe them at the right frequencies at the right time, and the floppy drive should just move. So let's check that out. Okay, so here's the game I.O. port of my Apple IIe, and you see I have a couple of leads plugged into the port, uh, a blue one and a green one. Now the blue one is plugged into Enunciator 0, and the green one is plugged into Enunciator 1. Now I have those coming out and plugging into this floppy drive. It's kind of hard to see here, but uh, basically what you got is the blue one is the step command. When you uh, toggle that one on, that tells the head here. Uh, to uh, step in one direction, and uh, the green one is the direction. So whether or not that has voltage on it or not will tell this which direction the head is supposed to move. Now if I turn those on at the right times, this should vibrate and make us music. So let's check out how we actually do that. So how do we make the floppy drive make music? Well, with a little bit of machine language code, of course. I've written a program that will strobe the floppy drive at the right frequency. Now all you gotta do is poke the right values into memory and call the algorithm and it'll it'll flip the floppy drive out. So that's, that's what it does. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the demo program I have included and see what happens. So the question was, can you use the Apple II as a floppy drive music controller? As it turns out, you certainly can. I have a link in the description to project directions and software so you can make your own floppy drive music. Check it out and remember to have fun. Well that's all for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe and remember, 8 bits are all you need.